Just before we get into our big interview this evening, here's a fact. Sports, it has the potential to contribute substantially to Kenya's GDP and create thousands of jobs. But how will Youth Affairs and Sports Cabinet Secretary Ababu Namwamba help in realizing this potential? Well, he joins us live on Newsnight this evening to have that conversation. CS, many thanks for making time for us tonight. Thanks, Sir Higa. I know it's been in the midst of, of many things, including the fact that you just got back from Qatar, I believe. Now, to a Kenyan who's watching the program this evening from Makweni, Busia, Nyeri, they may be curious to hear from you, CS. What were you doing at a World Cup that Kenya is not participating in? <laughs> my main mission, really, to Qatar was uh, my appointment with uh, Mr. Gianni Infantino. The, the FIFA president? president? Of, uh, of FIFA. Mm -hmm. um, I did promise Kenyans uh, during my vetting uh, before Parliament that uh, resolution of uh, the suspension of Kenya from international football would be among my top priorities upon coming to office. And indeed, on day one of assuming office on 28th of October, I placed a call to FIFA headquarters. We had a conversation which um, was escalated to further discussions after that. And um, we agreed that we needed uh, to have a sit down uh, between myself and the FIFA team. But they did inform me that uh, because of the World Cup, they were basically packing their bags and relocating to Doha mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for the entirety of the duration of the World Cup. And so uh, I made an appointment with them. And so my primary mission to Doha really was, uh, was to meet uh, the team. And I did have a very, very good meeting uh, of, the, of the entire team, actually. Uh, Mr. Gian Infantino himself, um, the Secretary General uh, uh, Fatma uh, Samora and, uh, and the rest of the team. Mm. Uh, good thing is that they also roped in the CAF team, led by the CAF President Patrice Motsepe. So it, it, was a very, it was a very useful meeting and uh, I can confidently disclose now that it is actually during that meeting that the decision to, to really s lift this suspension was, was, was closed. The what, what did you tell them? What did you <coughs> promise them that your predecessor was unable to do that got the ball rolling hypothetically? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Well, here I was just real. Um, and from the beginning, I must say that from the beginning, I, I have been very candid with FIFA uh, and uh, more so on two points. The first point that Kenyan football does not benefit from the suspension. In fact, uh, the suspension has uh, uh, sort of diminished the allure of Kenyan football more than it has added any shine. Mm. And so I did impress upon FIFA that if indeed they're interested in development of football in Kenya, it was in the interest of that, uh, of that agenda for, for the suspension to be lifted. Secondly, I did stress the importance of integrity in sports and uh, made it very clear to FIFA that uh, what led us to this suspension were questions around integrity. And uh, well, Higa, if you've seen the letter that uh, was sent here by uh, General Secretary uh, uh, Fatma, mm. you'd notice that uh, she does mention that even with the lifting of the suspension, FIFA remains alive to those integrity issues, including the court cases that remain, uh, remain alive. And, and that is... Um, um, reflective of the deal I struck with FIFA, uh, that yes, we, the suspension will be lifted, but they must not close their eyes to the integrity issues around, uh, around football. And if we are going to develop football, then transparency, accountability, and integrity must be integral on that mission. So where does that deal leave <coughs> Nick Mwendwa? Because we know you opted to reinstate the rest of the FKF neck. Uh, we don't have, hear much about what happened to him. Does he have a chance for a comeback? Everybody always has a chance, Wahiga. Uh, what I believe is that uh, we are a country governed by the rule of law. Mm. And uh, 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 Nick now has uh, a matter before, which is live before, before our courts of law. And in my discussions with FKF, in the deal that led to my making the decision, to reinstate the FKF executive, we did agree that uh, he would take time away from the executive, uh, uh, the, the executive of FKF, to resolve those issues. And so, I do expect that he'll honour that, and uh, uh, he will conclude that matter. Should the courts find him uh, not culpable, then it will be up to uh, the leadership of FKF 
to, to decide uh, how then they move forward with him. But for me, what is important is to get Kenyan football back on track. But with a message to FKF, and I want to know, FKF to know that this is a message I have made very clear to FIFA mm. and CAF, mm. that even as we get back, <laughs> why here? Transparency, accountability, integrity. If we are not going to live up to those tenets, then we are not going to make any headway. We either clean this house or our Kenyan football is not going to get uh, How dirty is the house? The house is not clean, Wahiga. Is it all federations or just football? Uh, it is across, across sports, largely across sports. And, 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 and we've seen it with other, with other federations. I was dealing with a crisis rugby yesterday. Um, I'm in the middle of uh, a doping crisis in athletics. Uh, today, the Council of um, Wild Athletics is sitting in Monaco. They, they'll conclude their, their conversation tomorrow. And um, among the agenda items is the possibility of uh, banning Kenya from uh, our athletes from competing internationally mm. because of the rising cases of doping. And so the whole arena of sports, uh, I would say, has not been in very good shape. So I, I'm going to get into, I have a bit of rugby and a bit of athletics to talk to you about. But before we finish this football conversation, I want you to talk about the vision. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you've been following the, the World Cup. I don't know which team you support now that uh, we can't support Kenya, <laughs> Kenya there. But you, you've shared a vision yeah. for Kenya to participate in the World Cup in yes, 2030. Yes, yes. Uh, but many would question, are you really being realistic? Should Very. we focus on Africa Cup of Nations? Should we focus on Chan uh, realistic. Uh, before we can even discuss World Cup and Kenya? Well, here the World Cup is magical. It's, it's, it's absolutely, it's something that, uh, it's so sad that Kenya misses on it. By the way, while at, uh, while at it in Doha, I took time to watch a number of games. I think I saw a picture of I, you. I, I watched the Ghana, Ghana's first game. I watched Cameroon's first game. And I watched Brazil's first game against Serbia. Absolutely incredible atmosphere. I want to see Kenya on that stage. I want to see Harambe stars. Before I watched these games, uh, I had a meeting with, um, with Michael Lunga. Our, our, our Qatar-based uh, Qatar international. Uh, international striker. And, 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 and Mike, and I was telling Mike, I want to see you, Mike, on this pitch. I want to see you rub shoulders against the best of, uh, the, best of the rest of the world. And, and so um, I am following the World Cup very keenly. I'm a soccer enthusiast. I'm supporting all the African teams. I've really celebrated Senegal's qualification. I, was, I just watched Senegal before I came to, mm -hmm. to the show. And I've really cheered Senegal qualifying for the round of 16. Um, and so I, 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 I have a keen interest in football. And as any football lover, I'm following this keenly. My vision is Vision 2030. What's the plan? How do we vision get to that? Vision 2030, that at, at, at the very least, we're here. Harambe Star should be at, at the World Cup 2030. And how do we get there? Mm. By going back to the basics. We have ignored the basics in our football. We have ignored the need to invest in talent development. We have ignored our grassroots football structures. We are obsessed with the Harambe Stars at the top. We are obsessed with the Premier League at the top. But the Premier League and Harambe Stars have no feet to stand upon mm. because the, the structure below is dead. The structure below does not receive any funding. And so I want us to go back to the basics. In about three weeks' time, we'll be launching uh, a legacy project called Talanta Hela. Mm -hmm. Talanta Hela is about monetizing and commercializing our sports and the, and the art sector. And we want, to bring, we want to put big money in sports. We want to sport talent. We'll be launching a portal where you can take a clip of anybody in any part of this country and send it to us. And we are, I'm putting together a panel of coaches. Talent sporting, in a sense. Talent sporting let me ask and you, development, yes. Let, 